Hello everyone, this is Brianna Rutter, author of the book, The Natural Hair Bible, and founder of HowToBlackHair.com. And for these special videos, I love to answer all of the questions you all send me via email. So if any of you have any questions you would like for me to answer, be sure to check out the description box below for additional information. So we're gonna get right on into the video, and this video was inspired by an email I received from Sharon. Sharon emailed me because she wants to know how long is too long to keep a sew-in installed. She has a very busy and hectic life right now, so if she can get her hair done as infrequent as possible, that would be best. So Sharon, I'm glad you sent me that email, and I know a lot of you watching always wonder, how long should I keep my sew-in installed, or even for other styles like box braids and Senegalese twist and so on. So this information will also apply to other hairstyles as well, but for this specific video, I will be focusing on Sharon and her sew-in. So the first thing that I want to tell you, Sharon, is that you don't want to keep your sew-in installed any more longer than two to three months. The reason why is because you're shedding a lot of hair in that time frame. Typically speaking, you're going to be shedding anywhere from 80 to 100 hairs a day. Now add all of those days up in the span of two to three months and you have a lot of shed hair. The shed hair also doesn't have anywhere to go because it's contained in your braids or twists. So all of that hair is staying very close to your roots and that leads to matting. So if you can redo your hair, maybe even a month to two months, that would be great. But I highly suggest that you don't exceed anywhere over three months. Also, three months is that one time where you really don't want to push any more longer than that because any more longer than that is typically the time that it takes for someone's locks to form. When you are doing locks or you're locking your hair, you will notice that as time progresses, all of the shed hairs being gathered together and palm rolled together will eventually turn into a very sturdy lock. Your hair will become very tight within that lock and that's why that time frame of two to three months is best when you're wearing a sew-in and anything longer than that will lead to a lot of matting. The second thing that I want you to keep in mind is that if you're going to be leaving your install in for a long time, you have to be adamant about how you are doing your regimen. What I mean by that is you have to be making sure that you are shampooing your hair and scalp, that you're conditioning your hair, and that you're sealing your hair with some type of oil. Also, you wanna make sure that you are thoroughly drying your hair as well. On my channel here, I have done a lot of videos about how to take care of your hair and installs like sew-ins and box braids and Senegalese twists. So even though I'm specifically talking about Sharon's sew-in, this same information will apply to other hairstyles as well. As stated, or as I've always stated in different videos for taking care of your sew-in, you want to make sure that you have all of your products involved with your regimen. So the same products that you use when taking care of your hair without extensions is the same products that you want to use when wearing extensions. So you have your shampoo, conditioner, deep conditioning, and you also have a leave-in and your oil of choice. Make sure that all of your products are at a watery consistency to effectively put it onto your hair and scalp cleanse your hair, condition your hair, and so that it can give you the ease of rinsing out all of your products. So because you're going to be keeping your sewing installed for as long as possible, you have to, have to keep up with making sure that your hair is healthy or you're going to have a lot of dandruff problems. You may even have some mold issues or mildew issues if you're not getting the moisture out effectively enough, and that ultimately leads to breakage and hair damage. So my last tip that I want to give you when you are caring for your hair with your sewing is that even though you're going to be leaving it in for an extended period of time, every time you get your sew-in reinstalled or redone, make sure your braid pattern is different. So the way that I typically do my braid pattern is that I have one continuous perimeter braid that goes around my hairline. And sometimes I have two braids that go around my hairline and the rest of the braids are braided to the back in cornrows. This is a great braid pattern you can wear for your hair. But because this is the way you're going to be wearing your hair for an extended period of time, if you happen to get it done immediately after, I suggest that you do the braid pattern differently. So that could mean maybe you have one perimeter braid instead of two, maybe your cornrows go back and forth or even braid in the opposite direction. The reason why is because over time, you will be training the parts in your hair. So whichever direction your hair is being braided, 
when you are washing your hair and taking care of your hair after your sew-in, you will notice that all of your hair will seem to want to go in one direction. And this is a problem if you have a part in your hair because it will look like your hair is thinning. Sometimes this can be the case, but most times this is not true. If your braids are installed very comfortably and they're not tight, you will just see that your hair has a trained part or a part that won't go away. But if you're noticing that when you comb your hair and it looks like your hair is thin, it's possible that it could be thinning. So that's why it's very important to change up the direction your braids go or just completely alter your braid pattern by doing a different braid pattern the second, third, or fourth time around. So those are all my tips that I have to offer you as far as your sew-in, when it's too long to leave in your sew-in, some things that you can do to keep your hair healthy and to also prevent your hair from thinning. So even though you just wanted to know how long keeping a sew-in, I gave you all of that information as a plus as well. So thank you Sharon for sending me that question and I want to thank all of you for watching this video as well. And before any of you go, make sure to check out the description box to sign up for my email list. Once you sign up for my email list, you will receive exclusive content. So until then, I will see you all in my very next video.